Happy New Year, everybody. So it's uh, Crusader Connected's one year anniversary since I started the comic. And I thought I'd do a little breakfast and then tell you about the comic. So uh, join. Come on. Let's go. Come on. This morning I'm going to make some gluten-free waffles. Yeah. And two eggs over easy. By the way, I'm not a cook, so, you know, I'm going to add some vegetable oil. All right, so the oven's going to preheat for a little bit. So uh, I, I guess I'll get started. Um, I came up with the idea, oh gosh, uh, I think when the first season of One Punch Man came out, I thought it was so funny that there's just a character that could just one punch hit everybody who barely even cares. And so that's kind of how I got the idea for Eric, is that I thought it'd be funny to like set up a story with like how Alexander is, where you have that the usual, typical, like, brown-haired, uh, shonen protagonist. Wears his heart on his sleeve, everyone thinks he's gonna be the one, he's the underdog, whatever. And all of a sudden you have just this one-punch man character who just doesn't care about anything, and then he's given the power, the ultimate power, to, you know, destroy everything. So, I thought I could have a lot of fun with that, so... That's kind of how the idea for Eric, um came into fruition. My In college, a professor of mine told me, write what you know, and I do think that I know myself the best, so I kind of took portions of me and like divided them up within each character. So like Alexander, I thought would be like, whenever I feel like I can do better and, and work harder and I'm passionate about the things I wanna be and stuff like that. And then Shishi, like, on the other hand, is like, whenever I feel kind of like, being mischievous or like, you know, I could be the better man or I don't have to troll online or something like that, uh, then, you know, that's kind of the she-she side. So, you know, there's uh, there's like a lot in there and even, even Mina, she's kind of the more shy character um, and like I definitely have this shyness. I mean, uh, hey, people who know me, like, you know, I don't might be seen that, that shy, but I definitely am. Especially when I'm approaching, you know, people, even making this video, like, I don't really like to be on camera that often. One thing I do for eggs is that I, when I put them in, before I put them in, I put oil, but I also heat them up. I was told by my wife, but she told me to heat up the pan a little bit. It cooks a little bit, I guess, faster and more correctly, you know, instead of slowly. Also, ooh, I think waffles are, need like another minute or two. So how did I get started uh, with Webtoon? Uh, it's a long story, so I think it was about a year and a half ago, um, my wife Tori was uh, on Webtoon and she was reading Laura Olympus, and I was like, oh, what's this? And she told me about Webtoon, and then I started doing some research. I didn't do that much, I was honestly, I was dying to get this anime made for Crusader Connected. Like, I just wanted it so bad. And I just kind of put it on the back burner for years and years and years and years. And then I saw, like, there's a platform called uh, Webtoon, and they have Webtoon Canvas. And from then, I, like, I saw, oh, you can just post your own webcomic, and it's popular. People will see it. And, like, one of the biggest things in Hollywood, I work as an editor for Sony, and I contract, and I do all these short films. If you check out my channel, you'll see a bunch of for fun stuff I do. But, um... One of the biggest things is like, one, I don't really know how to pitch. I mean, I, I know how to pitch, but I don't know how to get things in front of people. And also I, I figured, you know, like no one wants to be sat down and like pitched ideas that have no backing, like from no name people. Um, so I figured, oh, this is my chance. Maybe if I can make Crusade Connected into a webtoon, I can get a backing, I can get a following. And then if I ever get that chance to have it turned into an anime or something like that, I can show it to people and be like, hey, this has got, you know, X amount of followers. I think having a backing and having people relate to it and showing that there's some kind of following might actually help. So that's the main reason I got this started as a webtoon. I actually had no idea how to make a webtoon. It was the craziest thing. I had to, I had to research how to make comics and then like it's everything's digital now, you know. Um, I actually used to, when I was a little kid, uh, I took my dad's video camera and what I would do is I would do the old school where I would draw like a stick figure with a baseball and then I would do the next page and I just I would outline it and then just change a little bit and then outline it and then just change a little bit and then actually I would use PowerPoint and I put the camera against the PowerPoint the computer monitor and I just space bar it so then you could see the the motion and that's pretty much how I did it you know and this is I mean we're going back like almost 30 years now so uh, you know I'm old I'm older than I look I I do draw uh, but I just am not good enough uh, at least I don't think I'm good enough to to do this and I also am really busy with my other side projects and stuff so I just I really wanted to be the writer apply what I know from filmmaking and writing and storytelling into this 
And that's where I think I, I shine and focus is just creating the world, making sure everything's consistent and let people that do uh, color and draw, like if that, if they're good at it and they're professional, then I have no, I mean, I don't mind just stepping aside and letting them take over. So uh, it originally started off as Fiverr. Um, you know, I found, I discovered what Fiverr was and then I, I tried a couple people and the first couple people were disasters. Like I, you know, no, no ill will against Fiverr. I mean, it actually is a pretty good platform. I, I return there constantly, but you just, you know, you just gotta be careful. Make sure you check out, um, everyone's, uh, profile and like, you know, maybe Google search some images, make sure nobody's, you know, fake has a fake profile and stuff. But you can find some diamonds in the rough. Like you really can find some skilled people. But anyway, I found somebody and they did, they cranked out the first uh, episode or two. Then I posted it right off the bat. I got featured as a um, webtoon. It wasn't like the on the main canvas thing. It was just like a, uh, like when you're brand new, there's like, if you scroll down, uh, it's like, <sighs> New hotness, I don't know what it's called. But uh, I got features that and I started getting lots of followers off the bat and I was not ready for this. Like I, I appreciate it and I definitely, you know, I wouldn't even have, I would probably wouldn't have even continued if it wasn't for that because honestly, when I first posted, I only had like 10 followers or something like that. And then after I got featured, it went up to like 600 or something. So that actually kept me going. But at the same time, I was not prepared for that and did not have that much content, so I just scrambled. I was like, oh crap, all these people are, are following me and I gotta have more content and I'm not ready. So I rushed and I found another person on Fiverr and her name's Karma, she's awesome. Um, and she cranked out the third uh, episode and I posted it. And then I like, I really had this like mini freak out because like I just didn't have enough content and I felt like people, yeah, I wanted to strike when the iron was hot. So I, I got a bunch of freelancers, but I will say I met some great people and they these freelancers are great like I don't have anything against these the ones that actually published I published to so I you know I'm I'm very happy with what we we're able to do in such a short time but at the same time it was expensive and at the other time like I just like the art it's not in, it's not consistent at all so actually what I'm doing right now a year later I'm going back with the artists that I'm actually using uh, permanently and I'm going to have them just redo a couple chapters so that everything's consistent. And a little bit, it, and now that I've flushed out more of the world and stuff, I can fix a couple errors and a couple things that were rushed. And then after that, we'll resume chapter 23, 24, 25, and that'll round out the end of the first season. After that, I'm gonna take a little break. Um, I'm gonna write out the scripts for season two, get all the updated uh, outfits and stuff um, ready. So it's gonna it's gonna be a few more months because you know it takes a lot of time. It takes about a month and a half, I'd say, to do almost two months to do one chapter because it's not just black and white like manga. It's it's you know a full comic. And it's black and white. Then it's then it's colored. There's also some cover art that needs to be done, um, and also character designs, um, location designs, stuff like that. So it's it's. It takes a good minute going into this new year. What I want to see, I want to have season two be more consistent as far as the art style goes. Unfortunately, there's no income for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial back. Yeah, it's gonna be probably reduced, I think to probably maybe a chapter per month, unfortunately, cause I was cranking out like probably a chapter every gosh, two weeks or something. It was crazy. We did almost 20, 21 chapters in one year. So, I mean, that was that was intense. So, I think in the future, it's probably gonna be more like 12 chapters a year, uh, one a month. You know, I hate to say it, but you know, that's just the reality. But you know, honestly, I'd say overall, Webtoon's done a great job, uh, Webtoon Canvas. I do want them to feature me. Hopefully, if you're watching this Webtoon Canvas, people, please feature me once I've redone chapter one and two. I'm gonna start, I'm kinda gonna repost everything as like a, it's gonna be a mix between comic and webtoon hybrid, where it's like, it's more of a vertical scroll. I'm gonna still make it as a comic, but then probably cut it out and make it more of a vertical scroll. Waffles looking good, yeah. One last thing I wanna say before I go is that Crusade Connected does have a mobile game, it is ready. Uh, I'm still waiting for the perfect moment to release it. I'm thinking like right when uh, chapter one or two is redone and re-released, it'll be available for free on the uh, iTunes and Android, you know, app stores. And also there's an anime, uh, you know, intro, I guess, promo uh, made by Leo. We made it last year. It's about a minute and a half. It's kind of, it's kind of like 
done in the style of, of anime, like an anime, traditional anime opening, like a minute and a half to music. Um, but there's no spoilers, don't worry about it. I made sure there's no spoilers. Um, and it's a lot of fun, you know, and, and the music's really awesome, so. All right, so it turns out I can't really cook while I'm making videos, but uh, yeah, here it is, Breakfast of Champions on a Dia de los Muertos uh, leftover plate, because I don't feel like doing dishes, so yay. All right, well, I'm making tea, and I'm gonna get back to work, but uh, all in all, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Uh, happy one year anniversary to Crusader Connected. Yay, we made it. And uh, also, happy new year. Um, I think, you know, I think I'm gonna use this YouTube channel a little bit more. I I really have not ever used it other than just posting a couple short films every once in a while. So you know, it, it being still locked down and all, I you know I'm debating maybe I'll actually post some blogs or something. But um, maybe tell you guys about some apps. I've been like some experiences in filmmaking and <clears throat> maybe some more experiences in webtoon and stuff like that. So let me know. Comment below. Like, share. Blah blah blah. All right. Bye everybody.